think I got blue lights on, I got green lights on, I got red lights on, I got so many lights on. <laughs> All right, it's great to be with you today and um, realize that everybody in the house probably needs a miracle. You probably need something supernatural. Uh, if you don't need something supernatural, then you probably have been asleep and don't realize what world you're living in. Uh, so everybody needs a miracle. Amen. And uh, I want to talk to you about faith toward God today. Uh, starting out, I'm just going to share a little testimony. I have a little thing in my pocket that's a, a testimony of a miracle. Uh, those of you that know me, you know I like to go out and hunt. I like to be in the woods. I got to be out in the forest for a couple of weeks at the end of the year. And in my little hunting stories, uh, I had several opportunities. But my greatest testimony was God has been teaching me that the greatest thing I've come to know in 50 years of knowing him is that he's my friend. So he's not just friendly, he's my friend. And he's been teaching me how to relate to him as a person. So we sing, I love your presence, very true. But do you realize his presence is just an indication of him? That's good. So could we say, I really love you? Amen. I love your presence, but remember whenever you feel his presence, it's because he's making known to you that he's there. That's so good. He'll never leave you, Amen. never forsake you. He's there. He's there more than we realize. Amen. And he wants us to, to be aware of that. So I've been practicing that over the last half of the last year, really practicing it. And so I was up hunting and I was sighting in my gun in the middle of the day. I went up in the forest and I dropped a little screw on the ground. You can't even see that. You see how small that screw is right there? I dropped that on the forest floor has no head it's a set screw comes out of my sight I dropped that in the forest and so I didn't drop that in the uh, on the pavement or on this ground here or mowed grass I dropped it on the forest floor and I needed it for my sight and that morning I'd seen 90 some elk and I'm <laughs> thinking my friend's gonna help me my friend did help me by the way he, he gave me three opportunities I'm just not wasn't skilled enough to get it done but we'll work on that next year but but I had a good time with my friend and I dropped this on the forest floor and I looked in my box for an extra one you know I'm looking for something natural do I have the natural means of fixing this I got some electrical tape out and taped my site together that that wasn't gonna work and so then I, I just was standing at the side of my front of my truck and I said Jesus you're my friend I really need that screw. Would you show me where that screw is? I walked to the back of the truck and I, out of my mouth, I'm feeling my friend. I'm, I'm trying to present to you that we're in a season where God wants you to know him. He really wants you to know him. Not what he can do for you, but who he is. That he's in your, he's that near. And so I walk and out of my mouth I said, well, there it is right there and as I'm bending over and said there it is when I said it is I saw it and I picked it up out of the out of the ground Come on. Now, now if you don't think that's a miracle well, I'll take this outside and we'll throw it out there in the bushes and you find it okay? <laughs> so I'm sharing this with you to tell you I don't know what the little set screw in your life is this morning that you need to find I don't know what the, the little key that you need to make sure that you, everything is going to be okay this week. But I want you to know that your friend knows where it's at. Yes. That's good. So I've come to tell you that faith is not toward a promise. Faith is toward a person. Yes. So what kind of year are we going to have in 2023? Are we going to have faith toward 2023? Or are we going to have faith toward God in 2023? I don't have a lot of faith toward 2023 because I went through 2022 and 2021. I'm 67. I've been through a lot of 19s and 20s. So I don't have a lot of faith toward years. I don't have a lot of faith toward circumstance. Uh, I get so confused on promises sometimes. It, it's difficult to have faith toward a promise. Have you ever had a promise from God come to pass the way you thought? Nope. <laughs> now, I've had several come to pass better than I thought. But I've never had anything happen the way I thought. Because God thinks better than I do. He, he has better ways than I do. Now, I'm going to start out by reading a, a, a 
piece of a prophecy that I gave a couple of weeks ago, and I think this is very important for us. If we're going to know God as our friend and we're going to have faith toward God in 2023. This is what I heard God say. He said, many of you have been looking for me to redeem your situation, to redeem your past, to redeem your circumstance. But I say, I have redeemed you. Because I've redeemed you, all things are new. This is not a season of do-overs. This is not a season of fixing what has been broken. This is not a season of rising to what you've never seen before. Or, or no, this is a season of rising to what you've never seen before. So it's not a season to, of redos or to fix something. It's a season to rise to what you've never seen before. Because I've redeemed you. This is a season of fresh appointments. Fresh appointments. To understand in your heart and let what's in your heart flood your mind. That you would know that you are about to find the treasures of my glory. And this was given right at the last of, of the year last year. So do not end the year with conclusions, but begin your year with expectations. So begin your year knowing that God is your friend. Okay, so now once you get that in your spirit, I am the redeemed. Now, my little lessons in my elk hunting, God, God uses this. Uh, I, I missed my shot early in the year, down in October, down south. And, and then God gave me a herd closer to home. And, uh, and I thought, man, I, I, I need a do-over. And God said, no, I, I'm not going to give you a do-over. I'm going to give you fresh appointments. Okay? <laughs> Okay, so, so fresh appointments. You can't say, well, I, I need to get the opportunity. I missed my shot. I need a new opportunity. I need a redo. No, you don't need a new opportunity. You need a fresh appointment. You need something that you've never seen before. Do you know who you are? You are the redeemed Come of the Lord. That's right. You can have faith towards your Redeemer. And you don't have faith towards your Redeemer because... He's your Redeemer. You have faith towards your Redeemer because He's your friend. Now, do you, which you, would you prefer? Do you need a, uh, do you need a Savior? Or would you rather have a friend who has the ability to save? Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Do you need power? Or would you rather have a friend who's really powerful? Do you need a Lord? Or would you rather have a friend who can give you right desires? Really good. Do you need a healer? Or do you, would you rather have a friend who has the ability to heal? See, he has the ability to do anything, but what makes him who he is, is he's your friend. God so loved you Come on. that he sent his son to move into your world to show you that he's your friend. Now, faith toward God, faith is always toward a person. If you put faith toward something, then you're going to give a personality to that thing. And you're really setting yourself up for an offense. <laughs> when you give an object, something, you know, when you, when you give a creator identity to something created, you're setting yourself up for an offense. It's really impossible to get offended with a creator because if you realize he's a creator, then he can change and create and make anything he needs. Very good. So I'm entering into this year believing that I'm going to continually grow. You're going to continue to grow and knowing that God likes you. God is your friend. While we were, I went and stepped in the back and just stepped in prayer with the pastor and just for a moment, and I, I, um, I heard that when we set boundaries between us and God, or boundaries between us and one another, that it becomes a, a fence. Mm -hmm. And when there's a fence, there's an opportunity for an offense. You're right. I was glad that way. Yeah. So, 
We, oh, fence. You know, I have a story on the elk because I, I shot it. I had 12 big bulls come up to me and I took my shot and I missed. And they went right across the boundary that said I had to have permission to go across. And then they just stood there. <laughs> and I made, I made elk noises to try to get them to come back and they just stood there. And, and I could have easily shot any of the 12 at that moment. But what prevented me from doing it was there was a boundary. Mm -hmm. Now, if I wasn't a believer, I probably could have taken that shot and pulled them out of there and been just fine. But, you know, I think it, because I'm a son of God, if I had crossed that boundary, yeah. I think I probably would have got caught and probably lost my license and, oh, no. and the meat wouldn't have tasted good the whole year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a big test to not take that shot. But sometimes we, see, see that was a, a, a thing. I couldn't cross that boundary, so I was prevented from going. What if you knew that your relationship with God, that with you and God, he doesn't have any boundaries? <laughs> he says you can come. There's nothing that prevents you from, from coming to him. Yeah, that's so good. Um, one of the biggest teachers in my life concerning God being my friend is our little granddaughter who's going to be three in March and, and, and uh, she, she says Gopa's her friend. So she knows, she thinks there's no boundaries. <laughs> in certain cases there has to be some. She's learning. But, but she, she, uh, she knows that I'm her friend. Now the reason she knows I'm her friend is because I make myself her size. To demonstrate her to her that I'm her friend. I'm her friend. I, I'm grandpa. I can I can do lots of things. I'm I'm in her mind. I'm powerful. I could be a savior, a deliverer, a helper, a healer. Okay, but she sees me as her friend, and so she gets excited. We're going to go to Gopa's house. Oh, Gopa's my friend. Because, you know, I know how to make it, you know, I mean, dad and mom can make a dinosaur train, but grandpa makes a dinosaur train. I'm telling you, I got, you, you, you don't need one box. You need three or four boxes to make a dinosaur train. I'm telling you. See, but I want to make sure that she knows she was born to be loved by me. God sent his son because he wants you to know you were born to be loved by him. You were born to be loved by him. So we live in an imperfect world, but we have a perfect friend. We have a perfect God. Huh. So what or who will you put your faith in in 2023? What will you put your faith in or who will you put your faith in? Put our faith in him. Faith toward God is empowered by God. It's not empowered by us. It's empowered by God. You can actually find it in the foundation of Jesus Christ. There's a repentance from dead works. That's not a repentance from evil. That's a repentance from being dead. Try that one without God. Yeah. See, now, repenting from being dead, when God grants you repentance unto life, you know what that makes you? Yeah, bingo, alive. He granted you repentance unto life. He, he made you living. He gave you life. Now, what kind of life did he give you? Hmm? His life. His life? What else? Eternal life. So that's life that doesn't die. Now, we get this idea, I got eternal life. When I die, I'm going to have eternal life. No, you, you have eternal life. So therefore, death has no power over you. That's right. That's right. Right. Eternal life comes by knowing God as your Father, knowing Jesus the Son. You do that by Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. The more you know Him, the more you know life. Right. Now, nothing can kill eternal life. That's right. Can't, do it. Can't be killed. That's right. right. So you don't know what's in 2023. 2022, I had a good friend die, but he didn't die. He entered into the breath of more life. Okay? Mm -hmm. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> 
So I don't know what's in 2023 as far as things. I don't know what set screw I'm going to need to find. I don't know what little thing. I don't know what little thing I'm going to need to find. But I know this. I am growing in knowing him. And he is life. He's eternal life. So he's granted us repentance unto life. Didn't it? Because he's granted us repentance unto life, the second thing he gives us is faith toward God. That's in the foundation of Jesus Christ. Faith toward God. Now, how does faith come? Hearing. Hearing God in your heart. Paul writes it this way. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The word there is rhema. So when you hear God speaking in your heart, it's faith. So walk to the back of the truck. Jesus, you're my friend. I'm in the front of the truck. Jesus, you're my friend. I need to find out where is it. And then I, I feel from inside, I feel his, him rising. I feel his voice. Sometimes his voice doesn't come as a sound. It comes as a presence. His voice rises from within me. And then I respond to his voice, well, there it is, <laughs> right there, and I see it. Now, I didn't create it. I just, it was a supernatural moment. A supernatural moment with your friend. A supernatural moment of hearing him. Now, how does that work? John wrote in, in 1 John, he said that, um, perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. I'll read it. It's in 1 John 4, verse 17 through 19. He says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we have boldness in the day of judgment. Tim said something about, you know, if we're looking at the world, we, it, it could be trouble. But we have someone who's greater in us than he who's in the world. So, we have boldness in a, in a day of judgment because as he is, we are in this world. Now, how is he? First is he's alive eternally. He's resurrection life. He's resurrected. He's alive eternally and he's a giver of life. So as he is, we are in this world. We're alive. We're alive eternally. There is no, and you know what? He's love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Now, faith toward him is really love toward him. Really good. And it comes because we know his love toward us. So it's not based on something we do. It's a response to something that he's done and he is continuing to do. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He picked me. You picked me. I'm alive. You love me. You love me. He loves me. He loves me. So my granddaughter knows that Gopa and Oma love her. She knows daddy and mama love her. She knows that she, she knows without a shadow of a doubt she was born to be loved by me. She knows she was born to be loved by Oma. She knows that. And, and sometimes we can even set some boundaries because she knows she was born to be loved by us. It's a little tough sometimes wrestling with the boundaries, but she was oh, she was born to be loved by us. See? Now we when we get faith toward promises, faith toward things, instead of faith toward a person, then our faith toward a person gets complicated because we we start putting more hope in things than we do in a person. Now, as children grow and they get older, that's what happens. Okay, I'm 67, so I've had plenty of opportunity to have faith towards stuff. And stuff doesn't work out well to have faith in. 
true. That could even include human relationships that get offended. Created things that are less than the one who loves you. But perfect love, see imperfect love will shake you, but perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love. I was born to be loved by him. He loves me. He loved me. Jesus, you love me. Can you say that? Jesus, you love me. Jesus, you love me. 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 You love me, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that you love me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you love me. Thank you, Father, you love me. Your fullness, God, is wonderful. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you picked me. Thank you that I am redeemed. I am the redeemed. Perfect love casts out all fear. Now, if we can get rid of all fear. So now what, what's going to happen is, I'm going to read some scriptures to you that are going to help you understand this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus. If one died for all, if Jesus died for all, then all died. And he died for all. In other words, his death was our death. He died for all that those who live. Now, how would you live? He died for all, so, but he gives us life. He gives us eternal life. Not someday, right now. Love gives us life. Love gives us life. We died, but then he gives us life, so those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So now, we live for him because we died in him, so we, we live in him. I'm the redeemed. Everything about your life, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, is a testimony of him. Yeah. You're, you're in the mirror when you look at what are you looking at? You're looking at you're looking at him. Now he's inside of you. Greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. So so don't get confused by the wrinkles and the and the changes that are going on in your life. Don't get confused by the created part of you. Look deeper at the creation that's inside of you, the, the newness, the fresh appointments that are coming from the inside out in your life. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith, in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I live by faith in the one who loves me. The life that I now live. I died, but I live. Amen. That's right. I died, but I live. So, so if I, I can't, I can't be judged according to the flesh anymore because flesh died and the life that I now live is a spirit-empowered life, an eternally-empowered life. We sing about the power of the blood. You know what the power of the blood is? The life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh, Jesus took that cup and he drank every drop. He poured out his life of the flesh so that you and I could be free from being bound to the life of the flesh and now have a membership in a body that lives by the life of the Spirit. Very good. That's good. The cup that we drink is not the cup of flesh. It's the blood of the Spirit. Grace. Holy Spirit. A perfecting Spirit in our lives. This is where we get faith toward God is by the power of His Spirit. So good. So the, the power of the blood is 
Ha ha, devil, you can't kill me. Look, I am alive, eternally alive. I am part of the body of Christ. The life that I now live, I do live. I'm a husband, I'm a dad, I'm a grandpa, I'm a friend, I'm a member, I'm, I'm a minister, I'm a whatever I am in life. Whatever I do, I do in faith toward the one who loves me. I'm alive in him. The life that I've been given now is a, an eternal life. Ooh. The life that I've been given, I had a temporary life. A life that could end. A life that was bound to days, you know, periods of time that begin and end. A life that was bound to seasons. A life that was bound to times. But when the fullness of the times came, God sent his son. So good. So that we wouldn't be bound to times, days and seasons and moons. <laughs> but we would have eternal life. The day of the Lord is not an event. The day of the Lord is light that never ends in darkness. The day of the Lord is a place of relationship, intimacy, power of life, love. In Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 3, For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. What are those? Well, things like fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. In other words, put to death your need to get life from stuff. Yeah, that's what it means. But just put to death your need to get life from stuff. Stuff that makes you feel good. Stuff that fulfills your passions, your, your carnal desires. Now he's not saying kill your carnal desires. He's saying receive what enforces those things are no longer holding you captive. It says, and put on <laughs> the new man who is renewed in the knowledge. So you put off those things and you put on the new man. So verse 6 says, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming against the sons of disobedience. Oh, what does that mean? How does the wrath of God come on somebody? The wrath of God only comes on you if you're disobedient to reach, see what's been given to everybody. What's been given to everybody is love. If you don't receive the love, then you receive what God's wrath is on. You know what God's wrath is on? He hates anything that destroys life. That's good. He hates anything. If any, anything that you... Uh, if you go to something for comfort other than the comforter, Holy Spirit, you're going to end up with something that is a taker instead of a giver. And it's not going to be a comfort to you. It's going to be a pain to you. Mm -hmm. my, my, my friend has been teaching me about friendship and um, He's told me that a friend doesn't need anything. So my friend doesn't need anything from me. He doesn't need me to love him. He doesn't need me to worship him. He doesn't need me to read my Bible. He doesn't need me to come to church. He doesn't need me to do anything. And that's not what makes him my friend. Now, he's a unique friend because he's a giver. He gives life, he gives breath, he gives all things. Now, because when you know who he is, then it changes your understanding of knowing him as your friend. Because if you relate to him like created stuff that needs, then you define him as a taker. And you, you label your friend as a god. God is not who he is, it's simply what he does <laughs> he can do God stuff 
who is he? He's father. He's life giver. He doesn't need anything. He's a father who's a friend. He gives life. He gives breath. He gives all things. And so he wants to be in my life. And he's jealous. What's he jealous of? He's jealous of anything that is trying to take from me because he wants to give to me. He's not jealous because he's not getting something. When we think of the word jealousy, we think, I'm jealous. I'm not getting what I deserve. And I, I, you, you're, you're giving your attentions over there, and I deserve that. I'm jealous. That's because we don't think like what we should think. What if you didn't need anything? What if you didn't need anything? What if you didn't need... Now, uh, hear me. I told you we all need to find the little set screw. We all have miracles that we need. We, need. we all have needs. But what if our relationship with God is not because of this lost set screw? It's because of love. What if life is about love, not needs? What if relationship with God is about love, not needs? And then it's amazing what needs get met when you're in relationship with the giver. So good. But you're not in relationship with the giver to get what he gives. Try. Very good. If I was going to teach you on hearing God's voice, you all hear God very well, by the way. But you all hear a lot of other stuff, too. That's true. So the way you learn to hear God is you learn to cut away to what doesn't sound like God. It's like carving an elephant. You get a piece of material the size of the elephant you want in your statue, and then you cut away everything that doesn't look like an elephant. That's good. <laughs> Same way with hearing God. You hear God perfectly, but you hear a lot of other stuff too. And how do you hear God perfectly? It's not dependent on you. It's dependent on Him. He's always speaking. Why? He's always loving. That's very good. So what you have to learn is cut away what doesn't sound like Him. So anything that sounds like a taker is not Him. <laughs> anything that, that isn't, isn't love, but you have to define love right because love is not defined by what you get. Love is defined by what you can give. Now, the more we grow in relationship with God, the more we grow in that same relationship with one another. And then we become givers. <laughs> we become lights. We sang a little bit about lights today. The father of lights. He gives every good and perfect gift. He's the father of lights. I am a light. You're a light. You're a star. Stars are not reflections of light. The moon's a reflection of light. Stars are not. Stars are like, I, 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 like the, I said a, a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was a week ago, when did I speak of that? Was it last week? Maybe last week. Last week. Uh, there's someone who rules the day. The sun does. The sun does. And we would say the S-O-M. And not just the S-U-M. But the day is ruled by the sun. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right? But we still live in the night. And who rules the night? The stars. The moon is there. But you don't always see the moon. The moon only tells you there is a sun. The stars don't need the sun to be the stars. Because they're the same substance as the, the, big, the big daddy in the sky. <laughs> the little stars are the same substance as the big daddy. The one who rules by day, we have the same substance to rule by night. Good. Now what's the night? The night is your world. 
Quit praying for the world and start praying for your world. Quit loving the world and start loving your world. Quit looking for answers in the world and look to find the answers that are already in your world. Because God loves you. So in your world, there's a miracle. I'm the one who loves you. And 2023 is a year to be dependent upon the one who loves you, to have faith toward God, to have faith toward your friend. Not faith toward what he can do, but faith toward him, relationship with him. So the life that you live, you live by faith in him. You put off the old man, you put on the new. And it's a place where everybody's loved, whether you're Greek or Jew or circumcised or uncircumcised or Scythian or free, it says. For Christ is all and in all. Now, faith toward the person God is going to be demonstrated in works. It, it, isn't, um, it isn't proven by works. It's testified by with works. Works don't give you faith. But faith will manifest works. What works? How we act. What we do. How we live. Um, I just finished a, another course, a, a prophecy course, doing a, a, some Zoom training for a group in Colorado. And uh, as I was recording this week, I was again speaking that prophecy is simply this, God speaks and life happens. But when God speaks, he doesn't just speak with audible words. He speaks with expression. In other words, when he expresses, when he walks into the room, the room changes. Mm -hmm. That's true. When he, you see him, your world changes. When you hear him, your world changes. True. When you feel him, your world changes. When he expresses, when the word is expressed, when life expresses life, life happens. When love expresses love, love happens. Now, if I'm a member of life, if I'm a member of the body of Christ, the life that I now live, he died once, therefore we all died, but now those who live, because he gave us the gift of life, we live by faith in him. So what, what do our works do then? They give life. They give light. Huh. We're going to increase in being givers of life to our world. Yeah. Givers of life to our world. So your world will get excited to hear your coming. Come on. We're almost done here. Come on, it's good. Okay. Your world needs you to shine. Amen. Come on. In your world, you need a miracles. If you, those were here earlier. This little set screw right here is really small. Look at how small that is. Isn't that small? Look at that. I dropped that out in the woods, in the forest in the ground, in the grass, in the sticks. And my friend, I said, Jesus, you're my friend. I need to find that screw. Where's that screw? And I walked and I said, there it is right there. And I picked it up. My little illustration is, first, that's impossible. If you think it's not impossible, I'll, I'll take this screw outside. We'll throw it out in the sticks. And you find it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
but my little illustration is simply this. I don't know what the little set screw is in your life right now that you need to find. I don't know. I don't know what miracle you need. But you need you got something better than that little set screw that you need to find. And that is this. God's your friend. And you're, he loves you. So this year it is not going to be a year that you're going to worry about, well, how did I lose that little that screw? How this impossible thing that's in my life that's happened? It's going to be a year of you growing in faith towards your friend. Not faith toward finding the set screw. Faith towards your friend. You see, you got something better than a savior. You got a friend who can save. Come on. You got something better than a healer. You got a friend who can heal. Good. You got something better than a comforter. You got a friend who can comfort you. Someone who loves you. Yeah. Come on. Whatever you need, put your focus on your friend. Have faith towards your friend. Then you're going to see it in the things that you do. There's an act that we do in Christ that is a perfect testimony of this way of life. It's water baptism. Most of us, when we were water baptized, we didn't have a clue what it's about. We had some measure of what it's about. And we said, I'm identifying as a member of the body of Christ. Okay. And that's true. But you realize what it was, was it's just an act of faith toward a person. Water baptism is saying, I identify in the person, Jesus Christ and Christ the body. So the life that I now live, I live by faith as a member of Jesus Christ and Christ the body. Yes. I am now a representative. I am now an ambassador. So what's the secret to being a good ambassador? Let him love you. Amen. So that's good. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. Doesn't, he who has an ear to hear, strive, struggle, wrestle, please. Sweat, fight to hear. Hearing is not something you do. Hearing is something that happens. Very good. Works of faith are not something you do. It's something that happens. When you know, <laughs> the more you know, as you know, the more you know the love of God in your life. Okay? So, I want to pray. Because I believe this year is a year of us being the redeemed and living a life of faith toward the one who loves us. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. I welcome you. I say yes to you. I say yes, yes, yes to you. I thank you that you've come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you are here in your your character, your nature, your way, your power, your authority. I'm putting my hand on myself. Because I'm speaking to me right now. And I welcome you. You can do that too. I welcome right now. That's right. I'm in agreement with that. That's body ministry going on. Come on. We are the redeemed. Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome you. We thank you that we are loved by you. And we, we just present our bodies to you today right now. We just say we've been given a brand new year. We've been given a brand new season. And it's not a season of do-overs. It's a 
season of fresh appointments. So we are going to need to do something. We're going to need to go higher. We're going to need to get our heads in the right place. <laughs> That's right. We're going to need to see what you see. As I'm praying, I'm also reminded God prophetically told me last week that this is not a season of understanding what's going on at the level of your world. It's a season of inversion and it's clear up top and cloudy down below. <laughs> it's, a, it's one of those times when if you want to if you want to see clearly, you got to go up to Mount Baker. You got to go up where you can see because it's a little too cold down below and it's warmer up there. And so it's that way in you right now in this season, God. We're not going to be able to tell the future by looking at what's going on at the cold level of our world. It's too cloudy to see what's next. But it's not cloudy at all in you. So we choose to see you for who you are. We choose to see you as our friend. We choose to see you as the one who loves us. We choose to recognize that the life that we now live, we live hidden in you. We live in you. And whatever needs to happen in the cloudy world of our world, we know that you have the answers. But we are not coming to you because of we need answers. We're coming to you because we need you. We love you. And we welcome your grace to empower us to walk in that way that we do works that speak of our faith, the way we act, our attitudes, our expectations, our willingness tomorrow at work, our eagerness to be, our ability to be dads, moms, uh, grandpas, grandmas, even our ability to be, uh, to be, uh, what would be without you, um, we're, we're widows, we're, that's our world, we're, we're single, we're orphans, we're, we, we're not stuck in any of those places, because it doesn't matter what the place is, you're there, you're in that place that is different than what used to be. You're in that place that's called today and we can do works that speak of our faith. We can have expression. We're alive. We can walk. We can sit. We can rise. We can speak. We can declare. We can do. We, we are alive because you love us. And the, and the works that we do, the attitude, the actions, the expressions are going to be testimonies of our love for you, God. You picked us. We picked you. We love you, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? Amen. All right. Yeah. Yeah, come on. But we, we, Jane. You know, I was cosmic screwed.